And when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. And if we're talking tight ends and we're going into round two, maybe round three, give me Ian Thomas, please. Just let's, I mean, let's just do the damn thing. Just based on giving his overall ability. Um, again, I like his arm. I think he can make every throw. The pick at number 12 is in. Welcome to Cover One, the NFL Draft Podcast. I am Russell Brown, and joining me tonight is a very special guest, Danny Kelly of The Ringer. Danny, how are we, my friend? Doing well. In the home stretch, as I was talking to you about early, uh, earlier, it's just it's just crazy how much stuff there is to do before the draft comes up. And I guess we're like two weeks away, a little under. Yeah, uh, 15 days, I believe. And oh, man. <laughs> I know. Dude, like, you, like, I remember when I was sitting there and I was like, man, 120 days. All right, we got a little bit of time, you know. Go, out, <laughs> yeah. go outside for a minute. And now I'm like in an office just – just going to town on the yep. keyboard and uh, just trying to meet deadlines to get things done and doing radio shows and podcasts with, with awesome people. So it's, Absolutely. it's, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse really, but uh, so <laughs> glad Absolutely. you're so glad you're joining me and uh, taking the, to join us to talk one year draft guide a little bit and just players in the draft and then just talking uh, some Seahawks stuff. And then um Sure. Some, some simple stuff, but, but, but for starters, I, I just want to talk about like you and your start in this business and, and really how it, it started for you heading towards the NFL draft. Has it always been the NFL draft or, or really how did the start go? Well, I started out writing about the Seahawks actually uh, for SB nation. And that was kind of my, my beat or whatever. I, I ran field goals, the Seahawks site for about five years and I kind of worked my way into other stuff at SB Nation. So I started doing a bunch of draft stuff for them, for the, for their main website, the, the dot com or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, um, doing more national sort of just writing for them, both NFL draft and just NFL wide. And that was kind of, I guess, how the, the ringer found me just from my national work on, on all kinds of things. But yeah, I've, I've always loved doing the draft. It's always been just like one of my biggest fascinations. I think it's really fun to scout players and all that. But, um, kind of fell by the wayside a little bit over the last couple of years in terms of like how hardcore I was doing it. And I'm, I'm getting really back into it this year. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's one of those things like, and I, I kind of experienced the same thing like back in like 15 and 16 and like I, I had started doing it in 2010 just for like a local blog for my buddy. And it was mm-hmm. like, you start doing it and you're, you're like, you're amped up on it. And you, and then like you just got burnt out and you're like, man, I, I can't, I can't do this. And like, I, I was the same way. And then like 2017 came and I started actually like taking it serious and yeah. saw like this draft Twitter community. And I'm like, Holy, like, Holy crap. Like this is insane. So uh, <laughs> yeah, not sure. yet. So it's awesome. But yeah, like definitely guys, you have to check them out at Danny B Kelly on Twitter. Check out all of his content on the ringer.com phenomenal stuff all the time. Um, but let's move into the 2019 NFL draft and, and um, let's talk about one player that goes in the first round um, that's not getting talked about enough um, by the consensus or maybe not at all. And, and who's just one guy that you think is going to go in the first round? Yeah. So this is a tough question, I think, because big picture. And I'll get you, I want to take, I want to get your take on this. There's probably like 30 guys that could go anywhere from like 20 to 32. When you mm-hmm. say there's just so many different guys, I think that are kind of, in that zone, it's like it, the skill level sort of plateaus in that area. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, 100%. Especially because, like, most people's boards, like, I feel like around the consensus is, like, 15 to 20 guys getting first-round grades, and then mm-hmm. it's really just a crapshoot after that. <laughs> yeah. So with that in mind, a couple of players that when you, you sent me that question, I the, the first guy that came to mind is Eric McCoy of Texas A&M Center. Ooh. I think he's – more likely to be like a a second round early third round guy but just with um you know there's just team needs and everything like that if Garrett Bradbury ends up going kind of early in the first round which I think a lot of people really have him as a guy who could really climb into maybe even like the early 20s or something like that um if he goes off the board early and another team kind of in the back half of that first round like say it's the Rams or whatever Mm -hmm. if they really want to get a center I think McCoy has a slight chance of kind of sneaking into that first round so he's one guy that I thought of 
I kind of, I like him. I don't know if it'd be like a major reach because I think he's probably a second round player. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, he's kind of one guy I had in mind. The other one is Juan Thornhill of Virginia, which I think that's not necessarily off the radar at this point. I think a lot of people are, um, he's got a ton of hype lately because mm-hmm. he just completely blew up the combine, just super athlete. And I think people are starting to kind of see his versatility. Um, kind of like a meteoric Byron Jones type rise late in the, oh, yeah. late in the season, I think, you know, so he could be another potential guy um, that kind of sneaks into that, that first round. There's a couple of safeties actually, I think that could sneak into the first round that we're not like talking about as, as locks for that. Yeah. I'm, I'm really baffled on this safety <clears throat> class to be honest, like just overall, because I would be lying if I said I like it more than last year because I don't, and I don't think like there, they're, like there's not a Derwin James in this group or anything. Right. Like that. There's not a Justin no, Reed. Really not. And Justin Reed was like 25th, but I, I could definitely see Juan Thornhill being like maybe maybe even like the Patriots at 32. Like it's it still counts yeah. as first round guys. So like yeah, he very well could. I like Eric McCoy a lot in the first round. I think that could be really like a somewhat of a steal. Do you have like a specific team maybe that you like for him? Well, I I, I keep circling the Rams. I got him going to the Rams um, in my next mock draft because I think I have Bradbury going to the Chiefs, and so. You know, it's just one of those things. It always just depends on like the cliffs, right? At right. each position. And if Bradbury goes early, you could see a team be like, well, we're not going to wait until the third round now or whatever. You know, we're not going to wait until the late second round. Yeah. Um, we got to, if we love this guy, we need that position. You know, I think needs still do dictate what teams do. And so, um, you know, there's always, there's been a, a, a handful, I think, of surprise center first round picks in the past. And I think so that that's just one guy I think that maybe we're overlooking a little bit. Yeah, and it, it could very well be similar to last year where we saw Frank Ragnow, Billy Price, those guys kind of snuck exactly. And, and like I liked Billy Price a lot. I liked him more than Ragnow last year, and he went the they went back to back. So I don't know how many times that that's happened in the the draft history of things. Uh, that might be something I research after the show for sure. Yeah, um, but, I'm just I'm just looking that up too because you know um, who's who's the uh, I'm, I'm blanking on his name, but the 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 Cowboys center. Um, he was I think Travis per- Frederick. Yeah, exactly. He was he was perceived as I think a reach when he went in the first round too. Um, and then hindsight, obviously he looks great, but so, yeah, I just think it's one of those things. I think people don't really maybe look at the center position quite as hard because everyone's talking about tackles and, and even right. guards now are starting to be a little bit worth that top 10, top 20 pick. Um, but I still think centers are still like kind of forgotten. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And it like, it's just because, you know, you want receivers and running backs and the skilled totally. guys <laughs> and like, it's just, it, those are the, the players that put, asses in seats and in interior right. offensive linemen don't they put asses in the ground so uh, <laughs> absolutely I'm with you there I, I think I'm a solid choice there but uh, moving on from a player that could be sneaking into the first round I want to move on to a team specifically that could be moving back maybe not completely out of the first round but moving back a couple of spots in the first round Albert Breer earlier this week stated uh, that the Lions and the Seahawks are aggressively looking to trade down in the first round of the 2019 NFL draft. I know you're a Seahawks guy. Um, is there any truth to this? And what are your thoughts of, of maybe what the Seahawks are thinking? I mean, I don't have any first person like source on this, but it's absolutely true. <laughs> it's like the worst kept secret in Seattle yeah. is that the Seahawks want to trade down. They try to do that pretty much every year. I heard John Schneider on local radio the other day, 710 ESPN talking about how, I think he said, ideally, we would trade down. But it's kind of one of those things where, number one, you don't want to just trade down to trade down. They mm-hmm. want to get more picks. They only have four picks right now, which is, I think, the NFL low. And it's by far the the least they've had, um, the fewest that they've had. Like, in, in the time that John Schneider and Pete Carroll have been around, typically they have, like, ten. Right. So, um, that is just a – it's a – you know, they, they've made a bunch of trades for sort of like play, like Dwayne Brown, for instance, is the reason they don't have a second round pick this year. Um, and they have a few in the mid rounds that they traded for other guys. And so they just kind of petered out their, their supply of draft picks for this season. Um, so yeah, I could definitely see them moving back and, uh, you know, potentially twice. Cause I think they've moved back twice a couple times. Cause they're just trying to pick up like, you know, third, fourth, fifth round picks to try and kind of like bolster their, their ammo there. Yeah. And so, yeah, it would not surprise me. Um, but again, they have to find a team that's willing to give up enough to make it worth their while. And, and like we kind of talked about, um, 
you know, with the plateau at sort of the back end of the first round, there's going to be some good players there potentially that they really like. Right. And, and, well, and when you get, when you get quarterbacks too, that get picked and obviously that pushes players back all the time. And we could right. see a run on quarterbacks in the team somewhere. Yep, exactly. So, cause I think I said like the 20 from 20 on, there's probably like 30 or 40 guys that could go in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, if that cliff hits at 22 though, um, when you have like, you know what I mean? You have a first round grade on like, say you have a first round grade on 18 guys or something. Right. Right. And then a couple quarterbacks sneak in, a couple teams reach on a guy, and then all of a sudden you've got a first round, pick, uh, first round grade on a guy at 21 there. Um, that might, you know, make them not trade back. So I think it's just going to be one of those things where they have to actually see what happens in the moment. Um, they'll probably have a couple of trade offers lined up before they pick and then kind of go from there. But it's definitely their MO, and it's, I, I believe that report 100%. Is there a specific player that you think that they'll target if they move back in this first round? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I think that they'll be looking. Uh, you know, one guy that I, the couple of guys that I really like for the Seahawks, if if they do try and bolster their defensive line, because I think they, um, they really they do sort of like to build through the trenches a lot. You know, mm-hmm. they've picked a couple offensive linemen early on. They picked a couple defensive linemen with their first pick. Um, throwing like a receiver safety here and there, but um, I think you know they're sort of the old school view. Like you build from the trenches, you find the guys that are really hard to find. And so Jeffrey Simmons, if he falls far enough um, because of his ACL injury, um, he could be a guy that I think they definitely would be interested in because, you know, and he actually, I think, had a visit with them the other day. Um, And then I like Jerry Tillery for them. I think Pete Carroll's always really liked the long interior uh, penetrating pass rusher type type defensive tackles. They've, they've had a couple in that ilk over the years. And, um, so I think, you know, that's kind of that's kind of his thing. I think he likes that. I think Tillery is a very good player. And so he, he those are two defensive tackles that I think could be in that range if you trade back into like the late 20s, um, potentially even the early second round. I don't know for sure about Simmons, but Tillery is kind of, I think, got his, his stock, I think, is kind of all over the place. So I don't really know. Um, but, yeah, I like those two as defensive tackles a lot. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's pretty good, and I think that's with, uh, you know, when you consider just recently, I know it didn't pan out, but, like, Malik McDowell certainly fits that bill of, a, like, a yeah, longer defensive exactly. tackle. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with Tillery, I think that's that's actually a really good fit. And as I think about a potential, like, trade partner, I know it could be really anybody, and it's probably going to be a spur-of-the-moment type thing, but maybe, just maybe, the Oakland Raiders say, hey, we'll give you pick 27 to get, you know, what, what are they picking, 20, 21? Um, you know, we'll take 21. We'll give you 27. We'll give you our second round pick and like our fourth round pick and maybe a pick next year or something. And and I mean, that wouldn't be too bad. And then at, you know, 27, they take Jeffrey Simmons if he's there or maybe in the second round, if he's there, maybe Jerry Tillery or something. So no doubt about it. I I really like that. Um, and real fast, I want to get this out of, uh, my system because I, I think about it not every day, but quite often, uh, <laughs> greedy Williams to Seattle. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it, he would certainly fit a lot of, uh, he would check a lot of the boxes mm-hmm. for the Seahawks in the sense that he's long. He's very aggressive, very confident, um, very athletic. You know, he, he, he fits their prototype. I think of, of the type of safety safeties or sorry, of the type of cornerbacks that they look for. Um, you know, he's not a very strong tackler and I think that would be a concern, but I don't think that's necessarily a, a, a reason to completely take him off your board. If I, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think he definitely sort of fits their profile. Um, they've never taken a corner that early in the draft. Um, that's something that Seahawk fans love to tell people, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's not going to happen. I mean, there's only a limited amount of first round picks over the years. Right. And, um, frankly, they've traded out of their first round pick so many times. I can't even remember last time it, you know, like there's only probably been like five first round picks in the whole time that Pete Carroll has been around Yeah, maybe a few more than that, but like they just seem, they tend to trade down a lot. So, um, the sample size is small. I think it's still possible. They, they do have the need at those positions, uh, or at that position. Right. Um, so I, I think it's, it's definitely possible if he falls there and in, you know, there's a lot of indications that he could fall into the twenties. So right. that would be really interesting to see, you know, if they have interest in him and if he's a, if his tackling woes or his, in his unwillingness, I guess, to tackle sometimes is going to, you know, grade on them enough to, to take him off their board or whatever, or move him down the board. 
yeah, I, yeah, I just constantly circle back to it. I just think he's he'd be a, a really good fit there, just because of like his overall length and, and a lot of the things that you talk he, about it, his physical physicality and things like that. And he does remind me of Richard Sherman. I know yeah. that it's you know it's not making player comps is dangerous because you don't want people to be like, oh my god, come on, like Richard Sherman's a Hall of Famer, and it's like yeah, I know. <laughs> but like he has similar movement. Um, He's, you know, he's got long arms, kind of uses the sideline to his advantage. He's good in the press, all that stuff. There's some similarities. It's not like a one-to-one. Right. No, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, I, I like him a lot, though. Yeah, not, he's, he's 11th on your board, and, and we'll get into your board uh, really quickly um, in about two, three minutes. But I, I do want to ask about day two. It's, it's a, a, a day that's filled with a plethora of picks. Um, there's a ton of talent, like you mentioned. You know, we, we've, we're talking about anywhere between picks 21 and 32. We're talking uh, 30 plus players potentially being uh, options for teams. Obviously there's more players than that, but uh, just overall there's 30 potential possibilities uh, for the, for the second round though. I mean, who's one player or two players that are just like your favorite and why? (laughs) Oh man, there's so many. There's actually, I know it's tough. Um, I circled a few guys. So I really like, and and I went into this not really thinking I was going to like him that much because he's sort of the typical box safety or whatever, which I just don't think has as much value anymore. But I really watch. I watched Jonathan Abram play, and I was like, he is extremely fun to watch play. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a guy that flies around. You know, he throws his body around. He, he delivers big hits, almost to a detriment because you got to kind of worry about, like, the longevity thing and everything. But um, when you turn on his tape, I think he's an extremely fun player to watch. I think he could be a big impact player. I don't think, I don't think a team should take him in the first round because he doesn't, to me, look like a type of guy who can play that deep center field. Right. Um, but I mean, as a, you know, in the box over the slot type robber safety, I think he would be an excellent addition to defense. He's, he's versatile in the sense he can play all in, in multiple positions down low when he's coming downhill. And he's kind of a tone setter. He almost reminds me a little bit of Jamal Adams in the sense that oh. he's like pumping guys up. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's talking trash after almost literally every play. <laughs> it's yeah. actually pretty hilarious. Um, so I liked him a lot. You know, I wouldn't spend a first rounder on him just based on positional, um, you know, value and all that. But he was an extremely fun player to watch. Um, same vein, I really liked Darnell Savage from Maryland. Okay. Um, He's a guy that just flies downhill. He, he's got good instincts. He jumps, passes. Uh, he, he, you know, comes down the alley and, and makes big tackles in the backfield, all that. So he's, he's really fun to watch. Um, let's see, yeah. who else, I guess? No, I mean, there's a lot of guys, too, on day two. So it's, it's a really, like, a tough question. I mean, I don't mean to throw a, a tough one at you like that. But <laughs> yeah. um, with, with Abram, though, too, like, one of the things that scared me with him when I was watching him was when he was dropping into coverage and just like sometimes how stiff he looked or not as fluid with his hips. I was like, yep. ah, man, I like, I don't know, but like the physicality is just like on point. And it's like, I, like, I want this guy on my football team. So I could definitely see it in, in the second round somewhere to where he could uh, really stand out. Um, but, but with your draft guide and I, I'm, you know, as I continue to just scroll through it and guys, you can check this out at NFL draft um, it's got a ton of Danny's work on there. It's it's phenomenal stuff. We actually both have the same guy at 31, and that is Rashawn Gary. So uh, <laughs> really I, nice. I, I guess I'll I'll start uh, just with overall the the, the draft guide. What, what's the the overall goal um, over the next 15 days? How many players do you plan on having uh, with the guide? And and um, how did it really all start with putting a guide together like this or a big board? Yeah, so I I, I mentioned this I basically told my my editor that I wanted to do more draft stuff this year. And so they threw out the idea of putting this together. We, we did uh, the ringer did a, and still does a very big NBA draft guide kind of in the same format. Um, so we went with a very similar format to our NBA draft guide. And I put together all the scouting reports on these guys right now. There's 64 players on there. There's going to be 75 starting on Monday. And then, um, my goal is, is to get to a hundred, but I got a lot of stuff going on kind of in the next two weeks that, um, it might be a little bit tight. So maybe like 90 or something like that. But, um, I've got like a list of hundred and probably like 80 or so guys that I've watched and I like, mm-hmm. and, and are, and are worth kind of talking about and putting in there. But, but yeah, the goal is to kind of have full scouting reports on a hundred players and hopefully I can make it there. 
um, before, before I guess next, not next Thursday, but the Thursday after. Yeah, no, I really like it. And again, you guys can check this out at NFL draft dot the ringer.com. Uh, the number one player on the board, Nick Bosa with Quinn and Williams, and then Ed Oliver, Jonah Williams, and you got Cleveland Farrell at five, um, who maybe is one of the more pro ready edge rushers. So it's hard I want to get your take on that. What, Cause I think a lot, I'm, I'm probably higher on him than I think a lot of people are. I see him in the teens more often. Do you like Farrell a lot? I, yeah, I, I like him a lot. I mean, I've got him in the teens as well on my board. He's, he's sitting there at uh, 18. Um, and it was just, yeah. but it was, it was more so like, with the, with the recent um, discovery of him battling, I believe, through a toe injury. So, like, that kind of worried me a little bit. But, like, just overall length is there. I, I thought there was times on tape, like, he looked a little stiff. And I was like, uh, maybe like not. Like at the top of his pass rush a little bit? Exactly. Like, when he, yeah. Yeah, when he got to, like, the top, uh, like, the arc and everything, it's like, uh, does he have that, like, natural bend? So, but again, like, just overall, like, he's young. He's got length. He's got like kind of just a blend of speed and power that I really like. So I like five to me is a little rich, but like (laughs) that doesn't, that doesn't mean like a bad thing. Like, like you could be onto something that just other people aren't seeing. And I I can't really disagree with it because he's been incredibly productive and he's a three down player. And he's just a guy that probably has quite a few pro bowls in his future. I would have (laughs) to assume if he stays healthy. So like, I think it it checks a lot of boxes. Um, Yeah. What that's you- kind of that, that's exactly kind of like the way I looked at it because um when you're putting together rankings there's so many different factors to bake in you know what I mean so there's yeah. like upside which is why I have Brian Burns at number 6 even though obviously there's major question marks for him mm-hmm. um you know his his weight and and the way he plays his physicality things like that but I mean he's got incredible upside same with Josh Allen um and he he's a guy that's had incredible production too so I think you have to you have to bake in so I, I think you have to just kind of think about like, you know, like you said, how high is someone's floor and then how high is someone's ceiling? And so to me, Farrell has, I keep saying his name. I don't know how to say his name. I think it's Furl actually is how he says it, but mm-hmm. um, I think he's got a very high floor. And so that's kind of why I had him there. And I just think I didn't want to overthink it because I just watch him and I think he's really good. So that that's kind of like well, right. and that's doing the, the rankings is tough. Yeah. And it, it really is, man. Like doing the receivers, I was like pulling my hair out and I'm like, I, like, I don't know what to do because I feel wrong every time I do this because I like <laughs> so many different guys. And, and with that, There's so many different ways to look at it too. Yeah. Right. And like, like, do you do your board with like, like a, like a certain like grading scale or are you just simply ranking them off of like that potential and everything else or like more like a tier? It's more like tiers. Yeah. Okay. I, I, and then I kind of, and this is a really unscientific way, but just basically who I'd like more, <laughs> who I, who I enjoyed watching on tape, I think a little bit more right. kind of goes into it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of how I approach it, but. Well, and I think that's the way to do it, man, because like, you know, I coached high school football for, for six years. And last year when I did my board, I felt like I felt more comfortable with that board because I was putting guys like I went through and I put them through a grading scale, but like a lot of the grades that I was like giving them. And when I gave them like a certain score on a certain area of their game, I was doing it off of like how I felt and how, like if I was coaching that guy, like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. And this is how I would grade it. But like, I I like this a little bit better to be honest. And it might be (laughs) something I start incorporating through my stuff. So again, you guys can check this out at uh, the the ringers NFL draft page, NFL draft dot the ringer.com. Um, but let's get some just closing thoughts and I get you out of here. Um, where can we find you on Twitter and, uh, what's really like the, the next couple weeks looking like for you? So you can find me on Twitter at Danny B Kelly and next couple of weeks are going to be packed. Obviously keep looking at the draft guide for updates. I'm going to try and update it continually until the draft. Um, keep adding guys and we got a big team needs section in there by t- uh, that Robert Mays put together that's really good um, kind of like encapsulates like what to look for for each team on draft night and kind of some some guys to potentially keep in mind for each player mm-hmm. or for each team I should say and then um, I'm gonna have a mock draft coming out on Monday I believe and then another mock draft the week after that to kind of finalize everything and then um, a couple of different articles one one that I like to do in this is probably a bad way to, to scout, but I, I like to do one play that explains each player just to kind of give you a, a high level idea of kind of like a different each player's um, upside and sort of like why people are excited about them. So taking one play and kind of explaining 
why that not defines a player, but gives you an idea of like who they are as a player. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm the same way. Like when I'm writing something, it's like, I, I want to put a, at least a clip in there, right. uh, which is why it takes my articles so long to get done <laughs> because I'm like constantly putting clips and breaking stuff down. But guys, it's absolutely a must follow smash the follow button at <laughs> Danny B Kelly. Uh, Danny, thanks so much, man, for taking the time through all your busy schedule to just, you know, talk football with me and talk the draft. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. You've been killing it through this whole draft process. So I appreciate the invite. Yeah, man, absolutely. We'll do this again soon. But guys, for Danny, he is Danny. I am Russ Brown. You guys know what to do. Smash the follow button at Russ NFL Draft at Danny B. Kelly. Subscribe on iTunes for Cover One, the NFL Draft Podcast. Until next time, this is exactly what it is, the Cover One NFL Draft Podcast.